It'll be one to go this time, bye. Coming to the green, buddy, coming to the green. Let's go get him. Go, 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 take, 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 go, 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 go. Get your motor running. Head out on the highway. Continue with our top 12 driver press conferences, previewing the Coca-Cola 600 here at Lowe's Motor Speedway. We're pleased to be joined in the media center by our driver of the number six, AAA Insurance Ford, and that's David Reagan. He comes into this weekend 12th in points and uh, has been having a, a, a very, very solid second season in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. Uh, David, uh, looking ahead to, to Sunday night's race, the preparation, it's a different type of race, about 100 miles longer than most that we have. What's your thoughts about maybe this, the role that strategy will play in the uh, Coke 600? Well, obviously, starting during the day and ending at night, you're probably going to see some cars, um, you know, dominate early and not be so good late, and then some cars that are uh, pretty average the first part be really good toward the end. So you'll see some different people up front, I think. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to um, to pass a little better than we did last week. I think, uh, um, you know, we're constantly working on our race cars and trying to, uh, to get them to handle better. And, uh, you know, this is always a fun weekend, uh, getting to do a lot of the activities and stuff around the, the Charlotte area that – uh, go with the uh, Coca-Cola 600 uh, is a lot of fun. So um, 600 miles is a long race. We'll have to uh, to be patient in the beginning and um, hopefully uh, be around at the end. I think uh, we'll have a good enough car that we can uh, contend for another top 10, top 5 finish, and that's all we can ask for, and then uh, hopefully try to win one of these things pretty soon. All right, questions for David. Raise your hand. We'll bring you the wireless. Uh, questions for David Reagan. Who's got a question? Got one right here and then one in the back. Go ahead, gentlemen, right here, and then we'll go to the back. Jay Pennell, HardcoreRaceFans.com. With this being a 600-mile event, how do you how do you approach this race differently in setting up the car and personally as a driver? How do you how do you get ready? For well, this? well, obviously setting up the car, um, you uh, just put a little bit of adjustment. Uh, availability into the setup of the car for later on in the race so we're normally we would know what direction we're going to have to go in a 400 mile race or a 300 lap race something like that where here you know the track's going to change a lot a lot of things are going to you know the track's going to rubber up a lot probably going to see some guys running on the top in the middle and on the bottom throughout the 600 miles so we'll build some um, you know some adjustability into the race car where we can make some big adjustments throughout the night and like I said if uh, you know, if we're a 20th place car, the first part of the race, uh, we might be a car that can win the last part. So you just never give up. Um, if something does go wrong, if you get a lap down, you're going to have some cautions to uh, to get that lap back. So you just uh, are a little bit more patient, probably a little more give and take the first half of the race. And um, just, uh, I don't want to say taking it easy because you, you, you can't just go out and take it easy. You have to run hard, but probably just more give and take. Go ahead. David, Brad Gilly, PRN. Can you talk about just this 600 being in Charlotte? I mean, would it mean any more to win this race because, you know, this is where all the shops are? Does it kind of offer any more bragging rights, I guess you could say? Oh, definitely. And, and this is one of the, the toughest tracks to, to get a hold of. Like I said, it's so temperature sensitive. And, you know, with the new pavement a few years ago, we've got the new car and always a, uh, you know, pretty difficult tire to, to get a handle on. So when you can come to a track like Charlotte, and uh, setups are real critical, uh, pretty high speeds. Um, 600 miles, the longest race. You know, a lot of factors play in your your pit crew and your um, you know your your decisions all night uh, really mean a lot. So uh, yeah, it would mean uh, a lot to win this race. Not only being here in Charlotte, but just uh, just at Lowe's Motor Speedway. Um, you look at the the history of, of this race, and you see a lot of champions and and, and great uh, competitors to that, that have won this race. That you look back and and really uh, think a lot of them. So. Um, it would be great for our team. It'd be great for AAA, and it'd be awesome as a driver to uh, to win this race. David Kevin Conley, Fox Eight in Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, will you explain or describe to us a little bit? I mean, how difficult it was to to replace Mark Martin, and then explain to us how more comfortable you are at this point of the year as opposed to where you were last year. 
Well, you know, going into the six car, um, I never really took the attitude. It was, you know, hey, here I am trying to replace Mark Martin. Uh, some of the best in the business couldn't have stepped into the six car and totally replaced him. I've just tried to uh, to do the the best job that I can and uh, keep uh, keep the sponsors happy and then try to keep uh, keep the fans excited about the number six car. Um, you know, Mark still uh, is a big part of, of my career. You know, we, we talk um, as often as we can, and I know we're kind of different paths now. But uh, you know, he'll always be known as the driver of the six car, and he'll always be related to the number six. And so, um, you know, I've just tried to, to do what I could with it, and certainly. Um, you know, encourage everybody to to remember Mark in the six. I, I don't want to totally write that off, and you know that is um, is a lot of why I'm here. From what uh, Mark and you know guys like Jimmy Finning and Pat Trison and certainly Jack Roush have, have done for the six car the last uh, 15 or 20 years. And then um, going to uh, to your other question about what was your other question? I forgot. Oh, comfortable. Uh, yeah, well, any, anything your second time around is a lot easier. Uh, anything you can do twice, you should learn from your first time and, and do a little better job. Um, and the bottom line is everything is, is easier. We're making less mistakes, and, and we can get there quicker. You, a year ago, we would eventually be fast, and I would be comfortable, and we'd run good lap times, but it was probably 100 miles to go in the race and it was a little bit too late and and so this year we can unload and we're a little faster we've been qualifying a lot better so we've had better track position better pit stall selection so everything just seemed to to happen a little easier a little smoother i know what's around the next corner i know how to prepare for it and ultimately making better decisions and uh, making less mistakes go ahead question Mike, I'm Mike Neff from FrontStretch.com. David, Saturday night you were pretty strong early in the showdown, but at the end you got too tight to be able to make it back up to the top two. Have you all identified any ways that you can make the car handle better uh, over the long run, and do you think that you've got to handle enough on the track now that you'll be able to be up front at the end of the night? Well, you know, time will tell um, after we get through with some different practices, and, and, and yes, we have made a few changes, and um, that's not the car we tested out here several weeks ago, and so hopefully we're, we're bringing back the car we tested. And so we've got a pretty good notebook on um, on how the car reacted from you know the five six o'clock hour to the eight or nine o'clock hour at the test. So just going off some some good notes. Uh, hopefully that will help. And then um, you know I'm just going to have to to try some different lines and find some clean air. But I think the bottom line is uh, we are um, just going to have to stand it pretty free at the beginning of the run to have anything. Uh, I think we saw last week with the nine that track position means a lot. It's really tough to pass. I think some of the fastest guys on the track were just kind of stuck where they were running and um, I think that uh, you know we've got to keep an eye on that and maybe have some pitch strategy. Certainly clean air means a lot. So hopefully we'll, uh, we'll be able to make some good decisions and get us a good qualifying start tonight. Any other questions for David? One more. Go ahead. David, have you found that um, as you have run a little bit better this year, guys are giving you a little bit more space, running with you a little bit more? How has the reaction been on the track for you this year as your performance has improved? I think it shows a little bit as we go. Certainly nothing happens overnight, and I think that um, – not only running a little better, but just um, you know wrecking less and being around more, and you know they know uh, know your face and know who you are, and hanging out with them more in the uh, in the garage, and also running the nationwide series helps a lot. Uh, you know, anytime you can get experience and uh, racing with the, your fellow competitors, and they uh, they kind of get a feel on how you're going to race them, and and I get a feel on on how other people are going to race me. So we treat each other a little different. It uh, certainly goes both ways, but I think that. Um, Yes, um, you know, to answer your question, that I do get a little more respect out there, and certainly, um, you know, still got a long ways to go, but, um, you know, we're on the right track, and we just got to keep doing some of the right things, and eventually we'll, uh, we'll be where we need to be. Any other questions for David? All right, David, thanks for coming in. Good luck this week.